Hi there, I'm Susie Wee. I'm the Vice President and Chief Technology Officer of Cisco DevNet, and DevNet is Cisco's developer program. Uh, congratulations on jumping into the Smart India Hackathon. I'm really looking forward to working with you to learn about the great innovations that you're gonna build going forward. What I wanted to do here was share a couple of things with you. I wanted to share some of the learnings in my innovation as I've grown up throughout my career. Uh, in addition, I wanna to talk to you about a big transition going on in the industry, which is the transition of how modern apps are meeting a programmable infrastructure and then I want to relate that back to problems that you can solve for the Smart India Hackathon Challenge. So let me start out by just telling you a little bit about myself. So I was born in the United States in Buffalo, New York, and uh, my parents came to the U.S. from Korea. They were from South Korea. They came to the U.S. in the mid-1960s. And what was interesting was when they came to the U.S., it was actually very difficult to move. <laughs> so now we have all sorts of tools. We have tools that lets us communicate and post and message and tell everybody where we are. But at the time that my parents came over, they were trying to create a better life for themselves and their children to be. And they were really moving away from home. So they came out here, they went to the airport, all of their family and friends lined up on their at the airport. They got on an airplane and then got a one-way ticket to fly to the U.S. It was their first time leaving their country. It was their first time uh, going to a country that speaks a different language, and English was not their first language. And it was just their first time to go away from their family and friends. And I'm just very thankful for that because I know that they were creating a better life for themselves and for us, their children to be. And I relate that and share that story because many of you are doing the same thing. You're all working hard to build your skills, to develop your careers, to create a better life for yourselves and your families going forward. So uh, now, you know, once again, I grew up in, I was born in upstate New York and I grew up there and I was always fascinated with technology. And really the big step that got me started in my career was when my father bought me a computer that I could have at home. It was an Apple IIe computer, and I was so excited to have this computer because I could program it. There was so much fun stuff that I could do with it. So I was learning how to program in BASIC and Pascal and learning to use it, and then I would always just code on it day and night. And I remember that you know I would be working on it late at night, and then my parents would be like, Susie, go to bed, go to bed. <laughs> and then I would go up to bed, and I'd lay in bed till I thought they weren't watching me anymore, and then I would sneak back down in code away. <laughs> and what was fun about that is that I was creating something new. I had the tools right in front of me to make something very powerful, and that was amazing. And, you know, it was just fascinating to be able to build things. And ever since then, I've been continuing to innovate and create inventions. Uh, I earned my way up to get admitted to MIT as a college student. I stayed there for 10 years because I stayed there as an undergraduate uh, to get my master's degree and my PhD. And my PhD was in HDTV, high definition television. Uh, we all take that for granted now because everybody uses HDTV. But if you go back to the 1990s, the early 1990s, HDTV was nowhere in sight. And so what we were doing was innovating. We were creating the new technologies that would be needed in a world of high definition and digital television. What was funny was at that time, people were saying, why are you working on that? Why are you working on HDTV? You can't see the, you can't tell the difference. It doesn't look any better. I mean, now we all know that HDTV looks way better than standard analog television. But the reason we didn't know that at the time was because HDTV cameras and HDTV displays didn't exist. In order to compress some frames of video, we need to run jobs overnight just to compress a few frames of video. So we were working way ahead of time, looking at where could we go if we digitized television. Then we could get to a web economy, we could have all different digital services come in, but at that time, it wasn't obvious. And I share that with you because right now, we're at a similar place in industry. Our tools are much more powerful. We have software at our fingertips. We have mobile devices. We have so many technologies. We have the cloud. But what happens is 
we're at the brink of creating a very interesting future that's very different from what we have today, and the power is in the hands of developers like yourselves. So what I've done is I've progressed through my careers. I've gone through, uh, through jobs where I was innovating and creating inventions of mobile video and mobile streaming media, content delivery networks, kind of foreseeing the future. Uh, most recently, I am at Cisco Systems, and I started and founded our developer program, DevNet. I started this four years ago, and it's super interesting. Why is it interesting? It's interesting because right now, what we're doing is Cisco's products, they span networking, security, data center, cloud, the Internet of Things, and collaboration. And with DevNet, what we're doing is we're opening up APIs into that infrastructure so that all of you can create innovations on top of these products. So imagine if your network is now programmable. What can that network do for you? You can get much better performance of your applications on the network. What else can you do? Well, when your wireless access points have APIs, then you can start to get information about how many people or devices are connected. Where are they going? Where are they moving to? Have they been here before or have they not? That's really interesting information on which you could build an amazing mobile app for customers. So there are so many things that you can do with this programmable infrastructure that it's really empowering for you. And with that, I know that you can create interesting digital experiences that we can't even dream of today. Now, it's really interesting how this is actually going to work for you with the Smart India Hackathon and actually how this moves the country uh, of India forward. And we look at all the impact. So let's take a look at some of the initiatives that Prime Minister Modi is driving and how the work that you can do built on Cisco platforms using DevNet and what we can do to really move the world forward. So once again, as I said, there's a big shift in how modern applications are hitting a programmable infrastructure, and this links very closely with the Digital India initiatives. So for example, let's think about Prof uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, effort towards developing a secure and stable digital infrastructure. Here he is building out the services that are needed to create a very solid infrastructure to connect the country and to connect all of society and the people in this. So that can mean bringing our roads together. It means bringing our infrastructure together. It means digitizing our buildings and providing digital services. All of this requires really strong infrastructure tools. Once again, spanning the network, wireless capabilities, including security, and how do we move all of that IoT data together? So we are very uh, aligned on how you could actually expand this digital connectivity out to not only urban India, but also out to rural India to really create a connected digital infrastructure for the entire country. Next, let's take a look at his efforts on delivering these government services digitally. You know, the whole point of the government is to provide initiatives and services that help people. It's not just to help the richest people. It's not just to help the people in big cities. It's to help the entire country. And so with this, we can actually build this infrastructure and create these amazing services and then help deploy these so that those services are extended not only to yourself, but to your families. One thing about my parents when they came to the United States is that they were earning more money and they were sending money back to their parents to help their families back at home. I know that many of you are building the most modern skills in developing software and creating great innovations and have uh, a hope to actually help out your families and friends in other places. So we can be very aligned on this. The last area that I want to talk about is uh, Prime Minister Modi's efforts towards achieving universal digital literacy. And it's amazing how we can actually provide people with the tools, give them the education, so that they're not just users of digital technology, but they can also innovate and create even more services that other people can use. The more powerful and strong we make all of the citizens of India, then we can get much more innovation and we can get many more solutions that are really dedicated towards helping both India's problems as well as global problems. 
we can also create business opportunities both within India and globally. And all of this is very important. Uh, one thing that I love is with Cisco having its headquarters in Silicon Valley in California is just we love seeing the connections. We believe that all of you, the people in India, all the innovations that you're creating are going to help the broader world. And because you are in your own environment, the solutions you come up with will be very different. Uh, I first visited India about 15 years ago. And I have to say I had the most fascinating experience when I was there. I loved seeing all the people, seeing the culture, and just the way that people have interacted and behaved. Um, I was, uh, I first got there, and then the first thing that we did was take the drive to Mysore as we uh, landed in Bangalore. And uh, it was interesting, I had a colleague with me, and you know, we were all kind of jet lagged, and he was in the car, and I was like, hey, what's wrong? Are you okay? And he was just like, when I look around, it's just that, Every sense is stimulated. The colors are bright. It's very noisy because you would honk, change a lane, honk, change a lane. The food is spicy. Just every sense is stimulated. And I love that because that is, to me, a great description of India. It shows the diversity. It shows the energy that exists there. And because of that, I'm very excited about DevNet participating in the Smart India Hackathon. I think that with the diversity and all the great perspectives and the energy that you all have, you're going to create innovations that I've never imagined. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what you will build. So with DevNet, uh, we are really excited to participate in the Smart India Hackathon. And what we've done is we've created uh, a challenge for you to take on in accord with your Smart India Hackathon challenge. So what you can do is go to your Smart India Hackathon mobile app and then go and find the Cisco DevNet Challenge. When you go there, you can register for DevNet, you can take a learning module, which will show you how to use our different APIs, and then you can qualify to get DevNet expert help as you build your own solution for the hackathon. So I look forward to the journey that you will be on. I hope that you will all become DevNet developers, and we look forward to just working with you and seeing your innovations come to life. Thank you.